Hey kids, it's the Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I'm absolutely thrilled that today is the first in an occasional new series on the channel that I'm calling Reader's Rides. Basically, it's a chance for us to have a bit of a nosy at somebody else's motorcycle, and today I'm absolutely thrilled to have this here in the garage. This is a Zero Engineering Type 5.2. So if you're interested in learning more about this bike, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so without further ado then, let's meet the owner of this splendid machine. Come on in, Graham. Hey Graham, thanks very much for bringing it along. You're First welcome. of all, what the heck is this? <laughs> well, this is the Zero Engineering Type 5.2. Um, yeah. The Type 5 is a, is a general sort of classification, um, but they did, you know, a couple of variations of this. The yeah. sort of 5.2 is a, they mainly made for the European market, where it had all the emission equipment fitted, so it's a Euro, um, you know, uh, Euro category. Yeah, um, Euro 4. Is Euro that? 4, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, also they come with the Harley Davidson engine uh, in black, whereas normal ones come in with a, an alloy finish. Right. Um, and also they, come, they came in, I think, three, four colours, white, green, black. Um, uh, yeah, maybe the three colours, actually. So just a, just a quick rewind before we get into the specifics on this bike. I've mm -hmm. never actually heard of Zero Engineering. OK. Uh, so uh, they're an American company, I take it. Um, oh, yes, they're made in America. I detect a yes and no. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, the, the, the brainchild of, of uh, Zero was a guy called Shinji Nakamura. Yeah. He's a Japanese guy. And he came to America, mm -hmm. um, I guess, in the, in, the 90, in the 80s and 90s. And um, he was very taken with the chopper scene, yeah. uh, American sort of custom bike scene. And uh, he set up Zero Engineering right. and uh, produced um, you know, a range of um, what he called sort of samurai type choppers. And um, th then, he, then back in the 1990s, um, I think he got together with a company in Japan called Plot, who they're a huge company in Japan who manufacture lots of parts for motorcycles. Right. And, um, he got together with them and then they decided that they would build a bike between them and it would be sort of sold across the world and it would be based on one of his designs. So this basically is, is what he came up with. Um, so was the this the, five. obviously it's the Type 5, which yes. kind of implies there were four more types before that? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Okay, right. <laughs> I'm really not sure about that. So what, do you know what sort of volumes so, they're, they're producing? I don't, but they, I, th I, I haven't... I don't really know for sure, but I think they normally round about 30, 40 bikes a year. Wow, I think. okay, so it's quite a. Yeah, so they're... I was sort of assuming it might be sort of a custom house and they were just knocking out two or three or something. Going but, uh, by what okay. they've said on, on, on their website, they said, I think last year they said 2018 or something, 30 bikes would be available. Wow, wow. But they're probably making more, I don't know, because obviously there's the European side, the European market, which yeah. these, they're quite big. This particular uh, model is quite popular in France. There's right. a, sort of a zero owners sort of group in yep. France. Yep. And there's a, a shop in Paris um, that sells these, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, is, is featured in some of the magazines scenes and things like that. Okay, so tell us a bit more about this specific bike. There. So it's got a Harley engine, you say? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's got the 1340cc Harley Davidson Evo engine. Yep. It's got the um, Harley Davidson gearbox. Yep. The later, um, some more or less, I think this was the last one to have um, the Harley Davidson engine. The, the later models um, went over to S&S motors because okay. um, they, they're, and there's a, a range of different engines which you can have in these bikes. There's optional engines, so they, I think there's a shovel head, there's a, a, a pan head, mm -hmm. um, and there's also the, well, this is the Evo, that they can also they do the Evo version as well. And they do another version called the Type 9, which um, has got uh, four, it's very compact four-link suspension on the back because obviously this is a complete hardtail. There's no yeah. suspension on this at all. So you're just relying on the seat and the tires, basically. Yeah, the seat, the tires, and these springs. <laughs> Does that make it for a comfortable ride? Grab uh, me, brute. Um, it's it's an acquired taste. Yeah. So what's the longest you've ridden it for in terms of distance and time? Uh, well, the, really, the dis the time span is is in between filling stations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say this but, tank looks very small. So yeah. What you are we can, looking at? Well, you can get around about 55 miles on a tank. Okay, wow. 
Um, so you ain't going to go touring, are you? Yes, exactly. Yes, I mean, if you, I mean, this isn't obviously my only motorcycle. I do have another one, yeah. but uh, but this I'm is. Interested. What else have you got? I got a Harley, sort of Harley, Harley, Harley okay. Davidson. Harley man through and through. <laughs> more practical, more practical beast. The other one. Then. I've had all the other bikes, yeah. you know, and uh, I've ended up with the Harleys uh, now because you know I'm not young man anymore, and uh, I'm looking for something that's safe, much safer, slower, yeah. and something where people can hear you coming. Basically. Exactly. Does this not make you a bit of a turncoat in Harley circles then? Because this is sort of a son of a Harley, isn't it? Um, I've never really taken it to anywhere where there's in front yeah. of other Harley Davids. I did. Probably best not to. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did take it. A friend of mine actually invited me to, um, I think it was Jack Lilly's Triumph yep. um, in, um, you know, sort of West London. Yeah. And I took it, not long after I had it, I took it down there. And it was one of their open evenings and everybody swamped over this. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, it is very unusual, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, if they're knocking out 40 or 50 a year, I'd suppose you don't know how many are in this country. There's, there can't be many. There's, I know for a fact that there's only four of these wow. um, in the UK. Wow. And I'm not even sure if there's four because I, 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 where I got this from, they did say that a couple of them had gone abroad. You okay. know, they'd gone into Europe. Well, so there may so only be a couple. The, the, I, I've only, I know that um, there's, a, there's a chap in uh, who works at um, uh, Crazy Horse Garage yep, in, yep. in South London. I know he's got one. And I know, and I have seen another one, funny enough, in, in Tring, of all places. Right, right, nearby. Yeah. Crikey, so, um, Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Same colour. I actually, in fact, I thought it was mine. I thought somebody had <laughs> stolen <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you weren't on this at the time. Yeah, that would be a bit of a worry, wouldn't it? Fantastic. So how long have you had the bike? I've had it just uh, about 18 months. Right. I got it in May 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but the sort of story goes back sort of three or four years from then because, you know, sort of... I just saw this, um, I can't remember where, I think, I think I saw a photograph of it in one of the magazines, or, yeah, yeah. and then I came across it um, at one of the, I think it was the NEC bike show, oh, okay. yeah. uh, and I was just totally blown away with it, I just couldn't believe what, what a fantastic looking machine it was. It is a beautiful looking machine, I have to say, I mean, I am often say I'm not a cruiser guy, but I'm being mm. turned gradually, I, I recently rode, well recently, about eight months ago, Rode a Triumph Speedmaster, you know the new one. Yes, and I, I do, have to yes. say it was a fantastic ride. It was comfortable, yeah. it sounded great, and I just thought actually, for just cruising on a Sunday, this is the way to go. So yeah. I, I, I've never ridden a Harley, so it's something I've got to do, and I think I might be turning into a cruiser guy because there's somebody that spends a lot of time here in the garage polishing bikes. Mm -hmm. This is right up my street. Yeah. I mean, how much time do you spend polishing this? How much time do you have to do cleaning this before you brought it? Well, to be fair, um, it sits in my garage, which is like inside the house basically yeah. you know? I was and, um, well That's almost it. yeah um yeah. It, it's heated out there and it's the same sort of temperature as the inside of the house all mm -hmm. the time so but i i just normally just dust it over um and and because it doesn't get used a great deal um you know it, it stays in this sort of condition yeah, you don't take pretty, it out and pretty much stuff, presumably. that's yeah. right so yeah. since the time you've had it what, what have you done to it is there any, or, or is there anything about the bike that's non-standard that you're aware of um well, it's it is it's it's pretty much as it came. There are little things that I've done to it yep. that um, that that have just sort of, if you like, uh, put my own sort of touch on it. Um, for example, the the seat yeah, originally it came yeah. with. I had the the seat um, uh, custom made, and this is in a sort of a, like an Alcantara material, which yeah, which, um, yeah. which looks really nice. And also, originally it came with um, normal coil springs here, yep. but I've gone over to these sort of scissor springs because mm -hmm. I found that um, with the coil springs, because it doesn't have any suspension um, at the back anyway, what can happen is, um, as you're going along the road, if, if you get sort of a road and it's got sort of certain undulations yep. in it, you get um, an interaction between the the front suspension and the back, right, and you, you can induced oscillation. Yeah, you can, you can start can of, you can start you know yeah. pogoing on the back yeah, seat yeah, yeah. because the springs are just moving up and down, whereas these um, are these sort of are stiffer bit. springs, and although they don't have as much give, yeah, they they they, they, they stops that happening completely, and I've found it much more comfortable actually nice, on the nice. road. It, it rides much better like that. And what's it like to ride generally? I mean, in terms of gearbox, clutch, which is classic. Is it easy to ride or hard to ride bike? Well, I, I can I, guess, but once one, the, the, uh, what I find with most bikes is 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 to sort of acclimatising yourself to the to the different position and the different sure. characteristics yeah. of the bike. Um, when I ride this a lot, you know, or when I do ride it and I ride it consistently, you know, then I, I'm, it just becomes like part of you, 
Yeah, yeah. But if I've ridden my Harley or another bike and I come back to this, it does take me a little while to adjust oh, to it. Yeah. But what, what I love about this is the, the engine on it. It's just su sublime. The, yeah. the 1340 Evo is probably one of the best engines Harley ever made. Right. Um, and this one obviously has a carburetor because the whole concept of the bike is simplicity. I mean, there's the absolute bare minimum on this machine that you yeah. need to ride it. Yeah. You know, there's no electronics on yeah. it, there's yeah. no traction control, there's no ABS or anything at all. It's absolutely basic. And, uh, and because of that, you have to do everything yourself. There's a manual fuel cock, there's a manual choke cable. Yeah, I noticed there's like a choke down here. Yes. Which is great fun. That's right, yeah. I, I did that. move that. That was yeah. originally over here, okay. but I did move it onto the side of the carburetor there. And um, yeah, so really it, it hasn't had a great deal um, you know, done to it at all. I, I do plan to change out the indicators. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've already got some slightly nicer ones. Yeah, they're, yeah, um, they're a bit... Uh... I'm, I've not gone... I, I haven't gone for anything small or anything like that. I've gone for ones that are a similar sort of size yeah, but made in being a nice sort of alloy. Gotcha. Because you want to be you want to be seen when some, you know, when you're turning. You yeah, want to make yeah, yeah. people behind you to I know... I love the instrumentation you've got on yes. it as well. So what is that just speed, basically? <laughs> Yes, I mean the um, what well, I mean the the instrument. You, you basically got the three. Um, you got Idiot the alternator lights, yeah, and yeah. oil light there. Yeah. You've got the uh, neutral there, and you've got your main beam. Mm -hmm. And then here, this was something that when I bought the bike, I actually asked them because they come with a kilometer speedo as yeah. standard. Oh, okay, got that changed. Um, I asked them if they would put um, the the uh, this particular one on, which is made by MMB in Germany, and right. it's. Um, it's a relatively low, uh, only goes to about 100, I think, that one. Yeah, uh, but because let's face it, who's going to be riding this over that? Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, would, yeah. to be fair, you know, riding it around on these roads, and, and it's not like you're going to take it on a motor or anything, but although I have heard some people do, yeah. uh, 50, 60 miles an hour... Is as much as you want to do. I mean, you're pretty low, so it's going to feel pretty fast anyway, yes, isn't it? That's right. That lack of yeah. suspension, not to mention the wind blast. That's right. I imagine it's quite an exciting ride. Yes, it is, because you're actually sitting in the bike, so the wind blast isn't too much. Yeah. 60 miles an hour is absolutely fine. I mean, I have I have done a little bit more than that, but uh, but there's no real point, because it's not that no, sort it's of not bike. Exactly, exactly. You no, just, it looks absolutely fantastic. You just sit back and enjoy it and ride it, and, and I find what I get more pleasure out of these days, having owned sort of sports bikes, Ducatis and, yeah, yeah. and Yamaha R1s and things like that in the past is that I'm looking more for, you know, get my enjoyment out of controlling the machine of course, and, and yeah, getting off yeah. of it and thinking, cool, I rode that well today. Yeah, and just joy of ownership. Enjoy I, of I mean, having it, in, ownership, having it yeah. in the garage and just looking at it would be enough for me. It's what I do in my Ducati. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Graham, for bringing it along. I mean, I know what everybody wants to know is what does it sound like, what is it like to ride? And Graham very generously said I could ride it. But I checked the small print in my insurance and it turns out I'm not entirely happy that I'm entirely insured, so I certainly don't want to uh, trash a bike like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it down to a safe place, the local um, station car park, start it up so you can see what it sounds like. Uh, we're going to stick a camera on the back of the car. We're going to have Graham ride behind me so we can get some shots of the bike in action. All, all right with you, Graham? That's great. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thanks very much again for bringing the bike down. Let's see Probably. what she's like on the road. OK. So there we go, that's it for this uh, first edition of Reader's Rise. I hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed that little taster of what the amazing uh, Zero Engineering 5.2 has to offer. Thanks again to Graham for coming along and bringing the bike. Appreciate Very your welcome. time, it's great. And uh, if you've enjoyed this and if you've got a bike that you think uh, you might like to feature on Reader's Rise, get in touch. Write to me at themissendenflyer at gmail.com and we'll see if we can sort something out. I don't just, I'm not just interested in exotica like this, but uh, you know, if you've got a phaser that you've had for 15 years, interested to see that too. Anyway, I hope that's been of interest. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Till then, this has been The Missing and Flyer. Cheerio. <laughs>